coming to the Alice Frank Edel dedication of the New Orleans High School Library Media Center. All right, so again, it is good to see everybody and to see some friendly faces and some, to meet some new people. I do have a quick favor. I need someone to go, maybe Mr. Harvison, can you stand by the punch bowl? I think uh, Dr. Homer Cowson over here is going to spike it. Am I supposed to help you or stop You're big enough to maybe take it in front of you. Okay, good for you anyway. Well, I guess I'd rather not do it now, but maybe later. Uh, just information here, what restrooms should you need them? The women's and men's are over here. The women are on the right, and the men's are on the left side there. So. Uh, well, there's a lot of people here. It's very impressive. Um, we've had some people come from pretty far distance. I thought my uh, classmate, Ellen McGregor, came from D.C. would be the farthest, but Ellen, you're beat by at least two people. I know we have uh, David Allen, right, from uh, Boston. <laughs> and Chuck Piles has come from Houston. <laughs> anybody with that? All right. Uh, I don't know what, which is farther. Anybody know a fan? <laughs> we can Google it, but all right. So, um, also, we have people spanning the, the decades here, so I thought maybe uh, if you uh, graduated from all in the 50s, if you could stand up, please. Now we got some 50s. And 60s. That's impressive. Uh, 70s. but I, I did a little hand count, and there are eight, no, nine, members of the class of 84. Anybody do that? Yeah, class of 84. Ooh. All right. Hey, the entire Providence class is here. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Well, it's time to get started. I have some introductions to make here. So first of all, on your program, you can see it was actually quite a... Well, there's a specific procedure that's spelled out uh, by the school board on how to do something like this. And so the first step, we had to form a committee. Uh, actually, we had to get, I'm sorry, we had to get signatures, getting a petition, and that went to Dr. Jenkins, the school principal. Then we formed a committee, and the committee consisted of uh, Dr. Jenkins, the principal, Dr. Louis Jensen, and I'll introduce him in a minute, Mr. Bill Weishart, who's the uh, director of our facilities here, and then myself, I was the faculty member. So once we got that all taken care of, then we formed another committee. <laughs> and this was the committee to get everything done, and that also is on our list. And if you guys you can wait, and if you want to stand up and wave here, so that was Susan Adams, Jim Wright, Karen Galligan, Tim Harbison, Apple Harris, Bill O'Connor, Steve Perkins, and myself. And it really kudos to Bill, especially. He's not even in the wall any long. He just misranked two to you. Is that correct, Bill? That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so special, uh, special thanks there to Bill for being here today. Uh, other guests we have today, we've got Dr. Louis Jensen, who's the Associate Superintendent of Albany Boyd County Schools. Josh Dahl and Adam Moore, assistant principals. They're hiding back. We've got Barb Alexander, our current librarian and media specialist. And Dr. Al Canables here. He's a city councilman. Again, class of 84. Um, but what a, anybody else, any other distinct? guess that I missed. I, I apologize if you consider yourself to be distinguished. All right. uh, next, let's see. Oh, uh, just some thanks then. Uh, the orchestra. Oh my gosh. 
And then after we're finished here, we have refreshments in the back. And I want to thank Leah, Leah and Crystal for putting that together for us. All right, and I uh, hope I haven't forgotten anybody or anything, but all right, so I'm going to just make a few opening remarks, and well, here we go. All right, so anyway, wow, it's truly amazing to see so many former students and friends of Miss Alice here today. I'd like to make some brief comments about this amazing woman whom we are here to honor this afternoon. However, no matter what I say up here today, my words cannot convey what Miss Wright meant to her family, her students, and so many others. Teaching is a difficult profession, but Ms. Rank made it look so easy. Yes, she wanted her students to learn, and most of us learned our Latin well, but she always understood the big picture and how important the education of the whole person was. How often did those of us in our classes hear the phrase, this is more important than any Latin I could ever teach you, followed by a life lesson that many of us remember to this day. For example, just last week, one of Alice's former students called to let me know that she could not attend today because of poor health. But she wanted to know, wanted me to know what a lasting impression Alice had left on her. While she was in high school, her father had passed away. Alice took her out for an ice cream Sunday and talked with her to let her know that she was there for her. Empathy. That is certainly something we need more of in today's world. I'm sure many of us can recall similar anecdotes, and there will be time for you to do so in a few minutes. At the end of the school year, I will have completed my 32nd year of teaching. Notice the correct use of the future perfect tense. <laughs> yes, who I learned that from. <laughs> Often when I struggle as a teacher with a difficult decision, or I'm unsure what the right course of action would be, I find myself, that, find myself asking, what would Miss Alice do in this situation? And I use this answer to this question to guide my decision. Sometimes I get asked the question, what do teachers make? And I assume that the person is asking about my salary. However, my reply is always the same, a difference. Teachers make a difference. And from the number of you sitting here in this atrium today, it is apparent that Miss Alice Rank made a tremendous difference in the lives of all of us here today, as well as thousands of other students throughout her nearly 40-year teaching career. As I look out today, I see so many successful people, doctors, lawyers, teachers, business people, and I know each of us was influenced by Miss Alice in one way or another. And the lessons we learned, both academic and life, while sitting in Miss Alice Wright's Latin classes, have been a great part of those successes. Thank you, Ms. Alice, and thank all of you for being here today. All right, next up, uh, I'm going to ask Elizabeth Galligan. Oh, school board member Elizabeth Galligan. Ah, oh, distinguished guest. I'm going to forget. <laughs> Elizabeth, you should have raised your hand. Oh. I, have, I plan on taking my notes with you, with me. I won't do that. Melissa Gallon, school board member. Miss Rank would be 
featured front and center. When I went to New Albany, more students took Latin than any foreign language. Oh sure, Latin attracted the high flyers, the pre-med, pre-law types, but Ms. Wright welcomed the B and C students too, and the students with no real interest in Latin, many, like me, were there because we just wanted the Ms. Wright experience. My mom, Karen Zeller, had spoken so highly of her that I just knew I had to take Latin too. If she had taught anatomy or welding, we would have all taken that. <laughs> <laughs> she was a legend in her own time, and her reputation certainly did precede her. I've struggled for the words to explain the profound impact this rank had on her students, and our love for her to people that didn't know her or were not, didn't have her as a teacher. It's impossible. You just had to be there. She was a true force of nature. Her energy level and passion were surpassed only by her love of her students. And love us, she did. Here's a bit of what she said when inducted into the New Albany Hall of Fame in 2008. It is our responsibility as educators to provide a sound education based on ethical principles, innate within every human being is first the desire to be noticed and loved. Then comes the need to be taught how to learn. It is the role of the teacher to notice and yes, to love the student so much that they are ready to learn and in turn develop all of their potential. What better way for a teenager to learn to live honorably than to read from the literary masterpieces of Cicero? If I only did homework for one class, it was always Latin. Ms. Ryan had very high exacting standards of all students. She knew the rigor was not a poor letter word. To go unprepared was just not an option. It's not that it would have bothered me that I didn't want to disappoint her. Our desire to please her to us to levels we did not expect from ourselves. She brought out the very best in her students and then a little bit more. The students not ready for class were admonished with one of her favorite sayings. In preparation, we'll cure what ails you. Very few students had to hear that more than once. I, I still do say it's my kids' favorite. <laughs> Teachers these days work hard at making connections and building relationships with students. Ms. Ryan was doing that long before it was a trend. She went to countless concerts, <coughs> plays, and sporting events, especially for her seniors. She often had a message of congratulations on the board the next day, in Latin, of course. She took kids on college visits that may not have been able to go without her help, and she counseled students on college choices and personal issues, too. She had a way of making each of her students feel special and important, and that they were her favorite. Of course, she loved us all, and her favorite was the one she was with at the moment. But she didn't just teach Latin. Like Steve said, sometimes out of nowhere, she would say, close your books. This is more important than any Latin I will ever teach you. And then she would give a lesson on integrity, honor, courage, or some other life lesson. I remember her often leaving the room when we had a test. She knew she did not have to worry about anyone she because we took those lessons to her. She also shared her love of travel with us and opened our eyes to those possibilities. Not many people I knew in the 70s and New Albany had traveled to Europe, but I always knew I would because she made it seem so glamorous and so possible. When I was in Rome and saw those odd pine trees in the forum and tossed a coin in the Trevi Fountain, I mentally thanked her for her inspiration. When Miss Rank was inducted into the Hall of Fame here in 2008, I remember being sad and a little let down when I saw that Fuzzy Zeller was inducted that day too. I was afraid that Miss Rank's moment in the sun might be overshadowed by a world famous legendary athlete being honored on the same day. I got to the ceremony early so I could talk to her. Most in attendance were there for her. It was a long line for Miss Rank. Everyone wanted a picture. All the individuals, the class of 59, the class of 81, now how about all the kids from the 70s? And on and on. Long after the ceremony, Miss Rank was holding court, surrounded by former students. My worry was unfounded. As nothing could have overshadowed 
what Mr. Ike meant to four decades worth of students. For many, she was the most influential person in their lives outside of her parents. It was a wonderful day, and one that I will never forget. She looked absolutely radiant in her red and black, even a bit taken back by all the attention. <coughs> she was always so humble. When she died two years ago, she was 96. A Facebook group of her students had almost 250 people. Now remember, some of them had not had her as a teacher for over 60 years. Every person was qualified for AARP. <laughs> <laughs> she had been retired for almost 35 years as well, so what a testament to the impact she made. Her husband told one of her students that she spent months writing out Christmas cards. She wrote in tidbits about her kids, her family, and her college, etc. Her love for her students did not end when we graduated. No, it endured her life. She left an indelible mark on her souls. And we will carry her love for us in our hearts for all of our days. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. She not only loved us, but she gave us the gift of high expectations. She taught us to have confidence in our abilities and be disciplined in our work. She taught us how to think and how to learn, lessons that would touch us daily throughout our lives. Our district has a breakfast for new teachers every year before school. I always go, I survey the group, and I hope that there is an Alice Rankin in there. Because every student deserves a teacher like that in their lives. And how incredibly fortunate we were to have her. Thank you, Elizabeth, for those very heartfelt remarks. Um, I was remiss. We do have a rank in the building. Um, Andrew Rank, Alice's nephew, is here. So. We welcome you and just want you to know that um, Aunt Alice had such a such a wonderful impact on all of us. Auntie to you. Auntie to you. <laughs> All right, well, at this time, uh, we just thought we'd open the floor to anybody who'd like to get up and make a brief remark. Um, give an anecdote to tell. Uh, I know there's some of you here who maybe do auntie more than others, but uh, just to you keep your remarks brief, maybe like three minutes or under. Uh, we do have cookies and punch back there. <laughs> Harps that you keep on our cows away from the uh, punch bowl. He gave it to me. Oh, okay. All right. Bill, come on up. So uh, I'll get two very quick anecdotes in because they relate to one another. I didn't get the possibility to be in a classroom like you guys, and frankly, I was jealous because of all the people I knew would tell stories about how Miss Frank would run her class. And I got tutored by Miss Frank after school because my, my high school didn't offer that. And so one week, I was the person who came unprepared, and there's no one you can hide behind when you're the only person. <laughs> back my mother's check and said, you need to give this back to your mom. I don't think I was able to teach you anything today. <laughs> that never happened again. So then, the summer before I was going to go to college, I went up to Notre Dame to take the test where you try and test out of your freshman year. And waiting and waiting for the bell to ring to tell them to start the lab test. And I go up to the desk and nobody knows when it starts. And finally, somebody stands up and says, start the lab test. So I, of course, I'm the only person taking the lab test. And I'm taking it, 10 minutes go by, and someone says, rings the bell and says, stop the lab test. And I was like, on. <laughs> I just started. And so I begged them to let me take a 200 level Latin class. They didn't want to do it, but they let me into the 200 level class. And on the first day, the professor wrote a phrase on the board. I looked up, 
translated it in my head, and I thought we were going to talk about the history of that, the culture, the author, and he turned and he said, now don't worry, I don't expect anyone to be able to translate that in this semester. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> so I went to the head of the department, and I said, I told him what happened, and I told him about what happened with the test, I told him about Miss Rank. I said, you know, this lady is a phenomenal teacher. I said, let me take the 300 level class. And if I don't get an A on the first test, you can bounce me back to 100 and I'll start over. Uh, and, and everything went great. And I was a classical languages major at Notre Dame. Two years later, uh, the head of my department came back to me, told me that he heard about this rank, and then he credited me with 100 and 200 level Latin added all those credit hours to me, free of charge, by the way, at Notre Dame. Thank you, Ms. Alice. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Jim, come on up, please. Whether you did or not, I think we did. 
right? So then a the more touching story. So she took myself and a bunch of us to try to entice us to where we were going to go to college. She took a couple of us to Irvine, and she took several of us to IU, just on our own time. And I ended up going to IU. In my freshman year, I, I had a back injury, and I had to withdraw. Um, and so the surgery lasted a long time. I was bedridden for a couple months. And I remember the first week, maybe, that I was home, my mom comes to the door, and she says, Miss Frank's here to see you. And I thought, awesome. And she said, okay, here's your book. And once a week she came by, I was in bed. And I'm not lying, the tutor being laughing, how crazy is that? I had Alice Wright for uh, three years, and she, everyone in here, she had a major, major impact on my life. She, she was friends with my mom, and I didn't have a choice. She talked to my mom. And I didn't have a choice that I was going to take Alice Frank or not. Neither did my brother. So, you know, it's kind of like almost, you don't have a choice, you're going to college. You know, you, that, that's just the next step. So you have to take Alice Frank. So Alice used to, uh, she favored, uh, she favored <laughs> athletes that were good students. And, <laughs> Sorry. Um, she uh, she taught perfection in the attempt for perfection in mind, body, and spirit. And when you when she saw you as someone who demonstrated those qualities, she really, really, really favored you. And uh, she would have me go. She get permission from my mom to have me drive with her to Indianapolis to see her mother, um, so I could support her, that type of thing, which was a humbling, humbling comment now that I look back on that. She, when we'd have football games, because she knew I was the captain of the football team and I was supposed to be important, she didn't want me to have unnecessary pressure, so she would either send the test home a day early or she would have me come to her apartment on DePaul Avenue to take the test in private so I wouldn't be pressured the next day before the game. <laughs> so anyway, Alice taught me a few other things that I hold on to and I, I, I've used as life lessons when I work with people. And that's a paraphrase to Socratic comment, Socrates comment, I'm from Socrates, whatever. Uh, Big people talk about ideas. Mediocre people talk about things. And little people talk about other people, Mr. Man. So, <laughs> an amazing woman. I feel blessed and fortunate that I had her for a teacher. She epitomized God's second greatest commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. God bless Alice. Steve Perkins. Uh, so it's been a number of years since I was actually able to fly. Um, and I don't mean in a plane, I mean actually levitate off the ground. Um, the one time that happened uh, was in 1986. Ms. Rank had loaned me a copy of her Bennett's grammar uh, to take home and look something up. I was inquisitive about some point of grammar, as, as really any cool kid would be. Um, and I, I brought it back to her and the next day, and she turned around and inscribed in the front cover and gave it to me. And I know that I levitated the entire way to the choir, which I had next period, my feet didn't touch the ground. That had to be the single best day of 1986. Um, as we listen to these stories and we talk about her influence in our lives, consider something else. How that has gone on. We heard Elizabeth talk about 
using the line preparation cures what ails you with her own children. Uh, three of us have gone on to become Latin teachers. Other of us have gone on to become uh, other teachers, and, and that ripple the effect. And, and I appreciate the quote. Uh, and, and think about Socrates. You know, her favorite author, classical author, was Cicero. And we read the pro archi Cicero's defense of the poet Archias uh, in her class, and there was a line in that speech, which really is Ms. Rankin Patton, was really not so much about the particular court case in defense of Archias, but really, as she said, it was a eulogy of learning. And that line from section 12 of that speech has, certainly in my classes, has been a, been a huge thing. Um, but it's evident with everybody here today. Cicero wrote the line, he said, people should be ashamed of themselves if they so bury themselves in literature that they can bring forth nothing for the common good or get into the light to be seen. That's why she loved teaching Cicero. That's why she loved Virgil and everybody else as well. It's because of those lessons when we keep hearing that and just think about all of us, yes, but then the ripple effect with our neighbors, our own children, our students, our co-workers, uh, truly, uh, that woman's influence is limitless. Thank you all for doing this for my aunt today. This is wonderful. Um, she treated all of you like she treated her family. We were all equal. And for some reason, I never felt jealous of you guys. I never, ever felt jealous. <laughs> However, I was jealous of Jack Heddle because he took her away from us. <laughs> Up to Michigan, but it was great to go up there and see her. I mean, how many of you actually went to her apartment in Michigan? The largest picture on her display of pictures, I made sure it was me. Because <laughs> you all were in there, and I didn't know why. She had to remember who was number one. Um, she was a teacher to us as well, and um, she was a little more passive about it. I don't think it was nearly the classroom setting. But one thing she taught me, and I'm sure she taught all of you. I would come back and tell her stories of my school, my teachers, and the teachers I couldn't stand, and why they dress funny, or why they talk funny, or why they act funny, or I can't listen to them. She said, you've got to get past the surface. They've got something to teach you. Get past the surface. I say that to myself at least once a week when I'm in an annoying situation. <laughs> and it's been very tough these last four years to, to do that. Um, but very glad to have had her for a hand. And I learned, when she was, I learned she was human at one point in time. We were in Washington, D.C. Many, many of the trips you took, we got to take with her as well. My, uh, uh, my sister got to go to Italy, and I got taken to Washington, D.C. And she made sure I had an audience with our representative Hamilton at the time, and made sure I got to go see Francois Mitterrand speak to the joint session. I was, not, I was in ninth grade, what did I know? But she put me in that situation, it was wonderful, and I hope she puts you all in those situations too to expand yourself, whether you realize at the time she was expanding you. But as we were driving through D.C., if you remember her Volkswagen Total Jetta she had in the 80s? You remember that? We're driving down a one-way street, across the bridge the wrong way. And, uh, <laughs> didn't want to say anything to her, but finally she said, this would make a preacher cuss. <laughs> and she did. First and only time I ever heard a word come out of her, and it was this one of the small ones. It wasn't a big one. But I she had to be that frustrated to let the D word slip out. <laughs> but we were going one way across the bridge in New AC, so she was a wonderful person. I want to thank you all for the time you gave her, and the fact that 30 years later, my gosh, you're still talking about her. That's an honor. That right there is an honor. Thank you so much.
they're the best way to make teachers. If I got a kid that's going to be a teacher, on one hand, I'm proud, and on the other hand, I'm oh my god, what did I do? <laughs> Especially late, G, right? Okay, well, that was just the one thing for me. Thank you for that. And the other thing is, this is not something I'm going to make you do right now. But if you had Miss Rank, I can't call her that. If it was a misrank to me, I would never presume to know what I understand. Sometime soon, you will look down at your shoes, and you will see the condition of your shoes, and you will either know that you follow Ms. Rank's wisdom and make sure your shoes will always be in good condition because she will look at your shoes, and that's how she knew whether you were taking care of everything you needed. What did your shoes look like? So, get your slacking on that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cindy Bright Athene, and I was so honored to have this rank. And I am one of five, I'm fourth out of five, and all five of us children had this rank. So it was sort of passed down as the thing that you did. Everyone took this rank, and we all benefited from it. Ms. Rank was someone who just would throw out little tidbits, and for example, I hope everyone is gathering their bearings today, because there is a point of order. And I don't know if you realize that, but there is a point of order in this class. And one of the things that always touched me is Jim, my brother, and my two sisters are here. Joe, um, he's in Arizona, and if he wasn't, I know he would be here. Because we all, although Miss Rank was our teacher, she also was our family friend. And my mom got sick um, with cancer when I was 17 years old, and uh, she died nine years later. However, Miss Rank, she also had Jackie, who's the youngest of the five of us. And she would make a point to come over to my house, our house, to visit my mother. Just, just for, that's who she was in the heart. But um, Mr. Jimmy, he was a consul that year in 1970 of JCL. And there was a plaque on the back wall. And she would refer to that to the students. And she would say, now students, turn around. There is Mr. Jimmy back on that wall. And that's Miss Cindy's brother. You know, and I was like, yes, it's my brother. You know? <laughs> So I really enjoyed Miss Rank, and one of the things, you know, you were Mr. So-and-so and Miss -and So-and-so, and she taught us respect. You would respect others, and you respected yourself. And so the gift of Miss Rank is truly a gift to all of us. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you.
So about a year and a half before she retired, she informed me that she had rekindled a relationship with a man, Jack Hill, who uh, was with her in the eighth grade. And uh, they, she would tell me that they, were, they loved to play golf, they would go play golf, and they would meet for different things. And uh, I was teaching in the old annex, and I was teaching computer programming, and there happened to be a, a little office outside, just to the side of the classroom. And one day, Alice just burst through the door. And you know how Alice was about the class being interrupted? Yeah. Oh, no, we don't do that. And if anyone ever came into her class and interrupted it, she let them know that that wasn't to happen. But she came in hearing this box, and she was just all up in the air. She looked at me, I just have to talk to you. Where were they talking? I said, well, I said, we're here. And she said, look, I don't, I don't, the judge gave me this, and I don't know what to do with it. And she opened it up, and it was a beautiful strand of pearls. And she said, dude, what am I going to do with this? And I said, Alice, where are they? <laughs> and then we're married. So that's another side of that I love.
and chased us away. You don't, you don't remember that? Solomon, I know you were there because you, you hit me in the head with a mud plot. Yeah, yeah, you did. Deny it all you want, but you did it. Art. Right. Oh yeah, of course. The reason we're here. Um, make sure, if you haven't seen the plaque already, please make sure you do. So I want to do a random mailing, rip a cloth off or something, but uh, Susan vetoed that. So, and also notice we have the letter above the, uh, the library door now at the Alice Frank Heddle Media Center. Mr. Tim. Uh, was there a particular class that uh Funded that, that plaque. I was just curious. Well, I know the, the class of '77 did a tremendous job of raising quite a bit of money, and we, we had several very, very generous donors. So we appreciate that very much. So, um, all right. Well, then uh, I'm going to use the uh, JCL gavel to adjourn this meeting. Margaret, you want to come up and help? Back. And uh, we do have lots of refreshments. There's cookies and punch and coffee uh, in the back. Uh, so please enjoy and continue the conversation and the reminiscing about uh, the sound like it.